God-sized assignments are totally different than man-made revival. Yes. That's right. God-made assignments are much different than man-made revivals. Yes. When God ordains a move, it's totally different than a man-made move. And I'll tell you what's different. It's not so much different in how it starts. It's not so much different even in what happens in the middle. But it's how it finishes that sets it apart. A move of God completes the work in someone's house, in their temple, in their heart. A move of man just gives you excitement and joy and emotion, but the end product remains the same. That's why we get addicted to moves. We get addicted to encounters. We get addicted to visitations. I don't want to be that person. I want to be the person that lives in the sustained presence of God. A sustained fire yes. of God. People come to church because they get beat up Monday through Saturday. So they come to church to get that feeling, to get that equipping. I don't want to be that person either. I don't come on Sundays to, to get, I come on Sundays to express what I've gotten. Yes, and to share it. And that's what the Bible says. When we gather, everybody has a song. Everybody has a word. Everybody has a hymn. Everybody has an instruction that God has given them. When we assemble, it isn't to be built back up so we can go back out into the world and get beat back down and so that we can come in and share how good our God is. Yes, amen. <laughs> too many of the religious, too many people who are after man-made dreams and visions and man-made moves, they are left with the words that we find written in the book of Revelation when Jesus is talking to the seven churches. Your works are undone. Incomplete in my sight. You think you have finished, but your work is incomplete. I don't want to hear the words undone. I want to hear the words well done. Come on, someone. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Amen. Brownsville Revival. John Kilpatrick and Steve Hill, who's gone on to be with the Lord. I don't know if you've gotten a chance, but I this, I didn't have any TV in Arizona for two and a half weeks. How many of you have TV? How many of you are addicted to TV? Let's be honest. How many of you couldn't watch CSI would go nuts? Huh? Or whatever your show is, the Brady Bunch, your hope is here. Oh, wait a minute, Dave, no, no, no. Whatever your, okay, whatever it is. Uh, I didn't have TV, so I didn't get to, I didn't get to watch TV, but I did have the internet. Come on. And so I went, I just out of curiosity, I went on YouTube and I typed in um, John Kilpatrick, Brown's Drone Revival, because I personally, just me personally, and, and many different opinions are out there, I believe that to be an authentic of God. Yes. I really do believe that. And, and when I was, I watched it, and I watched, you know, it started, listen, the revival started on Father's Day. Mm -hmm. Of all days for God to move, it was a Father's Day message. Steve Hill wasn't even supposed to be there. John Kilpatrick did not preach the week before he had a guest speaker, and he's not the type of pastor that likes to fill his, his pulpit with guest speakers, neither am I. Whenever I'm here, I'd like to be the one speaking. Not an ego, not a pride, but I've got a fire burning in my bosom. I want to get out in it. If I can't, these last three weeks have been hectic for me because I've had this word in me and it hasn't been able to come out. Come on. And so I put as much on Facebook as I could just to get some of that out so that I don't implode. Come on. I don't explode from the inside. Well, John, uh, John Kilpatrick, he finally called Steve Hill and they've been friends for a while. And, he, and Steve said, the only, the only Sunday I can preach for a long time is Father's Day. And John said, well, all right, I'll, we'll give you Father's Day. Father's Day. I listened to the message because it's all on. It was nothing. It was nothing great. Amen. What? It wasn't. It was. I was bored. <laughs> Not taking anything away from Evangelist Steve Hill or Pastor John Kilpatrick, but it was nothing powerful. Then the service is moving on through, and it's altar time. And he's he, and, and he's an evangelist. He wants to see people saved. Come on. And so he's throwing out the, the salvation message. He goes out, he asks two or three times, not one person comes forward. You'll see in the video, one, one guy or one, I think it was one gentleman to come forward. He wasn't coming to get saved. He was trying to prime the pump. He came up there. He was one of the elders in church. He came up to stand there. And nobody's coming up. And, and in the natural, we would think, okay, let's just shut this down and move on. Had they shut it down and moved on, they would have missed out on five years, five or six years, four million people coming through that church, getting touched by the glory of God. It didn't look like anything special. John Kilpatrick says this for two and a half years, our church 
fasted and prayed for revival before him. And in the beginning, they said, we, we, we thought God was going to move at any moment. When they were first starting out, they, he said, we thought the Spirit and the glory of God would break out at any moment. He says, and when the glory did finally break out, we were at the position of the mindset, we didn't think it would ever happen. Do you hear that? When they first got the vision, they were expecting it. They were excited. They thought that was going to happen at any moment. And then when the revival finally broke out, they had already given up. Didn't think it would ever happen. And when you watch the video replay of that uh, service, it didn't look like anything was going to happen. Even when the altar call came, nobody came up. Finally, a few came. Steve Hill was relentless. He kept on going because he had a fire burning inside of him. He knew that God was going to show up. And the next, the next thing we know, revival is breaking out. They're having services every day. And then whatever their schedule was after that. I feel like God asked me, what do you want, Marty? And I, my answer to God every time is revival. And let me tell you what I've had to sacrifice to hold fast. I've had to lose respect from some of you. I've had to lose participation from some of you. We've had people that are no longer here that don't want that, that don't, don't think that that is really where God has taken the church. I've had people come against me. I've had people lie about me. I've lost church members. I've lost friends. I've seen people in ministry step down. I've seen people in ministry leave. And God asked me again, what do you want? And my answer is the same. I want revival. At the cost of everything. I want revival. I guess my idea of what church is is different than what most is. My idea of what God wants to do in a city is different. I've often thought that God stretches us when we step into a new thing. And I'm a firm believer that most of the stretching occurs when we step away from an old thing. It isn't when we step into the new. You get stretched when you step out of the old. Amen. Come on. It's when you're willing to abandon and leave the old mindsets, the old comfortable places, Amen. the old friendships, the old ministries, the old applause, the old comments, the old amens, the, the old the things of the old. Psalm 32, 9. God said this to David. David, don't make it difficult. Don't be stubborn when I take you where you haven't been before. <laughs> don't make me have to tug and pull you along. <laughs> Just come with me. I'm going to read that again. George, God is saying to you, don't make it difficult. Danny, God is saying to you, don't make it difficult. Come on. Jim, God's saying to you, don't make it difficult. Don't be stubborn. Gary, he's saying, don't be stubborn. Come on. Marcus, he's saying, when I, don't, don't worry about uh, where we're going. He said, when I take you where you haven't been before, just come along. Come on. Come on, guys. He said, and ladies, he's, he's saying, don't, don't put your feet in and, and, and drag them. When, just because I'm taking you to a new place, God will stretch you to get you where He wants you to go. Because that scripture in the book of Psalms is surrounded by verses about changing. Going forward in a new thing. I think the victory of our change comes in the very beginning. We try to measure it at the end in some aspect, but I think sometimes the greatest victory when we stand in the beginning is how we start. Amen? Amen. If you drag your feet and you go forth stubborn, chances are you're not going to complete the assignment God has given you. But if you go with an open heart and say, God, I'm open and willing to change and do whatever you want me to do, you already got the victory in that assignment. It's already yours. Amen. That's right. The revival's coming by... And I'm closing with this. Revival is going to happen. I believe it. Amen. But it's not going to come by our efforts. I put this post up, and very few of you, if any of you, liked it, and I don't care. <laughs> because I am here to honor truth, not man made revivalist positions. I'm seeking revival as much as the next person. It's all I think about. Not so that we can have our church full and people can look it up, but because I see people dying and going to hell and that bothers me. Yes, amen. 